Hi, welcome to another edition of the BTCC app programme. I'm joined here by Matt Salisbury from Inside BTCC. Hi, Matt, how are you doing? Hi, John, you all right? Enjoying the heat? Uh, I'm enjoying it when it's a bit cooler today. Good, good. OK, OK. So our special guest today joining us all the way from sunny Scotland, because it's is it even sunny up there, is Rory Butcher, um, who's had a, a, a great year. Um, a few ups and downs in the British Touring Cars this year, racing for the Gazoo Toyota Racing Team, which is also known as Speedworks. Is that right, Rory? I always get these team names wrong. Almost right. Uh, Toyota, right okay. <laughs> Toyota Gazoo Racing UK. Oh, um, which yeah, is, is also known as Speedworks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, no, that's good. How's it up there? How's the heat wave at your end? It's warm enough. It's warm enough. Like um, yesterday, we have had two days where it's been about thirty degrees, and I couldn't imagine what it'd be like forty in the UK. We're just not prepared for it. And um, uh, like we've got young kids, got a little one-year-old, so most of the worry is just about making sure she's cold, cool enough at night. Um, but during the day, we've been absolutely loving it, like loving the weather, obviously. Um, these, these conditions we're not used to, and we're just trying to make the most of it and be outside as much as we can. But at night, it's just uh, just making sure the little one's comfortable. So uh, interesting, you just touched on it there, because obviously I, I know you fairly well, because obviously we worked together for a couple of, couple of, couple of seasons, a couple of seasons, a couple of years ago. And we were very successful between the two of us. I think we, we won a few trophies and things, so that was, that was fantastic. And then you ditched me. You know, literally ditched me. Had a great time, then ditched me. I just need to drop that in there, but uh, but that's fine. We're still we're still friends now. It's fine. I was I was angry with you for about fifteen seconds. I think when I had the phone call. I think do you remember that? But um, I, I can't. Yeah, I, remember, I remember the phone call. Um, <laughs> hey, I didn't ditch you, Sean. Don't say that. No, <laughs> well, you, you sort of did actually. I but did it. you should have signed straight away. I was ready to go. And, um, okay, okay. Come on, come on. But anyway, 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 it's in the past, in the past. The, yeah. uh, but you touched on it there briefly. So obviously you and Joy, your wife, have, have got two lovely young kids who are, you have to remind me names because I'm not very good with names. Um, Parker and Georgia. Parker and Georgia. Now that's one thing I actually like because actually a lot of the British touring car drivers, you're actually proper grown up people. You're not these kids who are spending 22 hours a day on the sim and down the gym and... You know, just going to see sponsor. You're going. To, you're going to do all of that, but also you've got a proper life. So, as in, you know, a, a wife and kids as well. I mean, how does that balance out when you're trying to be a you know professional racing driver as well? Yeah, it has obviously it has its ups and downs. It's um, you know, it's really cool to have you know them along for the ride as well, and um, especially I love having them at events because it kind of uh, you know a, a touring car weekend is like it's it's can be tough at times and when you get out of the car and you see your family in the garage it kind of gives you a bit of perspective and you can um, not worry about the smaller things um, but then of course you know Georgia was born last year and I have to say like the first half of the year last year uh, I, I did feel a little bit on the back foot um, you you're just well you're tired because you're you're, you're not getting as much sleep yeah. your priority, priorities change as much as your focus your focus is massively on the British Touring Car Championship and trying to fight for a championship you can't help but your fatherly instincts kick in and, and they become the priority so it's just trying to make sure that everything gets gets uh, enough attention and then um, but you know I feel like we're now into a much better balance with the family this year than we were last year and uh, feel back on my a-game again so well, so it's really important for, you know, I mean, for Joy back at home and also coming to the races as well, for you to have that support is really, really important for you to, exactly as you say, keep on your A game. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's it. It's like, for me to be on my A game, Joy needs to kind of uh, really provide a huge amount of support back at home, like you're saying. And um, But obviously, when a, when a, a little, when a, a newborn comes along, you, you've got to uh, step in and, and provide more support at home because that, that takes priority, doesn't it? And it's just uh, yeah. more sports important, but family obviously comes first. So, um, but yeah, I can't, I can't wait, you know, five years time, 10 years time. And I just can't wait to have the kids, kids a little bit more grown up and they can stand at the side of the track and cheer me on and shower the other drivers who's bashed me off. And yeah, it's going to be tough <laughs> Well, it's, like, it's when you start hearing the swear words when you come back in, because because somebody's t- then you realise that maybe it's gone maybe a slight step too far. It's plenty of old they are, obviously. I was, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. So family-wise, obviously you've got a big event coming up because yeah. 
Knock Hill is, is your family circuit. You know, you know it very well, obviously, as, as a driver, but also work wise, obviously, because your sister Gillian runs the circuit. Your brother in law, Gordon Shedden, also racing British touring cars, but also works there as well, I think, as, as, if I remember yeah. rightly. I know, yeah. I know you're, I, I think you, you were as well, but you sort of slightly concentrating more on your racing side of things now. But obviously, your dad's there, and, and you, it's, it's a big family, do, isn't it? I mean, your dad actually lives outside the first corner doesn't he having a look over the top which i thought was pretty cool um so yeah. that, that's that's all good stuff but how does that affect you coming up to this event because it is your big event of the year yeah i think it, it's uh i think just feel really lucky it's uh you know a place that i kind of grew up um you know and, and where i got my first taste of motorsport um race bikes at not curl did my first car race there in 2005 um, and, and that people like Aidan and, and Gordon, we, we all started our careers at Knock Hill. And obviously, I've got the, me and Gordon have that additional connection where, um, we, you know, we've had a, a part to play in, in working there and family, you know, run, run the venue. Um, so it's really cool. You walk in the gates on a, on a Friday for a touring car event. It feels pretty weird because uh, you're just, you know, you know, everybody in the paddock and everybody in the office is wishing you well and then in the restaurants. Um, uh, and, and that aside, you know, I'm sure Aidan, you know, obviously he, he doesn't work at Not Kill and the same with Dexter. They're going to feel the home support uh, that, that we get. Um, one minute, my little boy's coming. You okay? Right. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Say hello to Parker. Yeah. Parker, can I come say hi? No. no. You need a wee wee. You need a wee wee. I say do I every now and again, but this, yeah. that's my age kicking in. Come Right, back to back to the. Um, that's fine. That's fine. The uh, so that's I, actually that you've you've caught me a little bit short there because actually I was only thinking about I forgot about Dexter Patterson in the series as well. So now you've got four Scots on the grid, which is you know whatever that is percentage wise, fifteen percent, twenty percent of the grid. Um, you know that's that's a that's a fair showing. I don't know if there's been that many Scots on the grid before. Matt, you might know stats wise. There will have been, but we'll be going back a few years, I think, before for us to have had. Had that many Scots. Yeah, I mean, so so stats wise, what any big things jumping out at you for for Knock Hill coming up? Um, well, I mean, the, the the big stat for Knock Hill, and it's one that I'm sure is going to be mentioned a lot over the course of the next few weeks as we look up to it, is that it's the 30th anniversary of Knock Hill's first BTCC meeting. You know, okay. it was 1992 when we first went up to Scotland and. Uh, very famous race meeting. There were some big names competed in that first race weekend. So I'm assuming there's going to be a lot going on off track um, over the course of the weekend. I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Sean. Knock Hill for me is one of my favourite meetings of the season. I know that we all complain sometimes about it being such a long way to get there and it takes ages and teams say, well, it costs us more money because we have to spend extra time in a hotel. But I just think the atmosphere you get at the circuit and I think the fact that everything's so closed in and so compact means it's it's not like any other meeting on the calendar and it's one of my highlights every season. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I just think the circuit suits a British touring car. I mean, it, you, it really just takes everything out of the car. And and circuit is one of the few circuits, I think, that actually, as circuit knowledge, is actually really beneficial. A lot yeah. of the circuits say, oh, I'm, you know, that, that Josh Cook is particularly good at Thruxton, but I don't think it's because he lives up the road from Thruxton. I mean, it just happens to be that suits his driving style. But I do think there's certain little tweaks. I know when, when Rory raced with us and Jake Hill was alongside him, now Jake is one of these people who very rarely thinks that anybody can teach him anything about anything anything but that's 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 typical of a racing driver but he definitely learned a lot Rory when he was teamed up alongside you yeah he, he did and um sorry that sounds like uh, a total <laughs> I, well, I, 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 Jake said has said to me you know he's um he's been sorry guys one minute this is real world stuff you know, this isn't this is this is how it is in real life so that's fine when the kids need to go to the loo they need to go to the loo so <laughs> I think well, I think one thing that we need to bear in mind when it comes to Knock Hillshaw, though, is that, you know, you're saying these guys have got the experience. Well, that's because they've raced there when they were younger. You know, a lot of the drivers on the grid, they'll have done lots of races at, at Silverstone as they've been coming up through the ranks. They'll have gone to Brands Hatch a lot. They'll have gone to Snetterton. 
they don't go to Knock Hill that often. They go there once a year. They might go and do a test at the start of the season as well if, if a team plans a, a trip to Scotland. But the vast majority of the grid doesn't get that track time north of the border. So, you know, when it comes to that, you've got Rory and Gordon in the BTCC. You've got people like Joe Tanner, Hannah Chapman in the minis. They've got that circuit experience that other guys just simply don't get. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it, I think it is one of the unique, it's, it's a weird place as well. Sometimes less is more there. They love looking at the pictures of the cars up on two wheels, taking lots of air. But all the time it's doing that, it's not providing any traction out the corners. So it's, it's a balancing act between the two. And as the tyres tires wear, it's even more important to know when to be able to take a lot of curb and when not to, Rory, do you think? Yeah, I think so. And um <laughs> Yeah, I think I think local knowledge is important at Knock Hill. It's it's it's, uh, it's quirky, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you're talking about there, it's um it's which curves to strike and how much to strike them. Um uh, and, and you can find find lap time from that. And um I think the Honda was particularly good around Knock Hill. Um and it just gave me the confidence to really attack the circuit around, especially around that first sector and over the chicane. Um and uh yeah, it's when when it when it's going right and you've got the car dialed in, it's it's an amazing feeling to drive knock hill at speed in a touring car. You know, the speed we're approaching the chicane, we're over hundred mile an hour, you can't see the exit. And um you're just having the lightest break before getting back to throttle and you, you can't see the, the second curb either. So it's all done through feel and timing. Um, and uh, I think that's just yeah, as you're you're talking about, it just makes knock hill so such a great circuit for touring car racing. Um, you know. The, the thing is, I think a lot of the drivers have kind of caught back caught up. I remember back in 2019, and I had that two tenth advantage on the Saturday over everybody, yeah. um, and I haven't really felt that since. Um, uh, you know, I think I qualified six and P20 in 2021, um, and P8 in, in 2020. No, sorry, 2020 and then 2021 I qualified P8. Um, everybody's caught caught up um, and. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a real challenge to, to try and get on that front row, even as a someone who's raced, who started out their career there and has a, a real good knowledge. Well, your, your season, obviously, the last two seasons you've been with the Toyota team, and last year was a, a bit of a learning curve. I think I think even you would say you were, I think you might have been a little bit surprised at how difficult it was changing cars with a different team and, and learning different things. But obviously this year, as well as, uh, so you think, great, I've got that under my belt. But now this year, obviously, you're one of the teams with, with the new Toker engine and then also with obviously the hybrid system that everybody has I mean obviously Speedworks did a lot of work with that last year but it was quite specifically put from Toker that the work they were doing was to benefit everybody not just Speedworks with their development but I mean how have you found it this year you know with with, with quite a you know 50% of the cars brand new yeah it was it's, it's been uh, like you say we, we've started to make some real strides in the second half of last year you know we, we put on pole at Silverstone and one both races and, and other successes and other podiums. And we started to kind of build some momentum as I got a real handle on the Corolla. And then obviously we've got this new engine. It's 30 kilograms lighter than the old Swindon engine. So, you know, that, that's changed things. We've also got this big battery in the middle of the car. And the cars have all gone up in weight. So there's been... Uh, the, the car is very different to, to how we finished last year. And so... Um, but saying that, I do feel like we are in a, a good window where I feel we, we feel as a team a little bit frustrated because we know that we just are missing like the smallest amount before we can really pose uh, pressure on guys like Ingram and you know um, and the, you know the, the BMWs at the front um, and but, you know we, we feel 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 like we're we're close um, but I still I, I do feel we've done a good job as a team to kind of be consistent and score as many points as we could, could have with what we've got. Um, and then you've also got the, the, the Toka engine, which obviously some people have been very vocal about. And, you know, again, we're so close to making that, that be very competitive um, and we're not far off. It's just to be in this, in this championship, to really be fighting for race wins, um, everything has to be right and the margins are so close. So, uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're frustrated because we know we're, we're not that far off. 
I mean, you've, well, had, changes I, I, within, yeah, you've had changes within the team for, for this season. Obviously, Sam Smelt, you had alongside you last year, has moved on. And you've got Ricky Collard's come in, who's, you know, he's a quick driver. Um, he's maybe not quite been able to show his true pace so far this season as he gets used to, to front wheel drive. Um, you've also got Rob Austin working with you as well uh, off the circuit. I mean, how are you finding the dynamic with, with your new teammate and with Rob kind of off track? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased, actually. I think uh, I think Ricky's got the potential to, you know, like to be a fantastic touring car driver. There's always glim, glimmers of, uh, like, raw speed uh, in every session. And there's time, you know, he's kept me honest in a few sessions this year. Um, and he did a really good job at the, the Stettleton tyre test um, over the two days. And I can just see it building. He's just, he's just getting closer and closer. And it's just for him. He just needs to piece together a whole weekend, um, you know, qu practice, qualifying and, and the races. But I've come into the championship from a similar background to him, from like GTs, rear wheel drive, big power, aero. Um, and, I, you know, it was difficult to, like I say, piece everything together. I was quick in, say, in a session or I had fast laps in a race, but I couldn't actually really get the race craft, the consistent pace, um, the qualifying and, and, and also deal with the amount of uh, information with the engineering side of it as well with actually developing the car um, but Ricky I think the second half of the year he's going to be right on it and it's great to have a teammate who is, uh, who's, who's giving me all this information that I can use as well you know I can he's pushing me at the moment and he's going to only get quicker um, and the d dynamic between us is great as well he's, he's, he's a really fun guy to be around um, bubbly good laugh um, so that's that's fun, and then obviously we've got Rob Austin, and, and the first time I worked with him was last year. Um, I raced against him. I was really impressed with a lot of the stuff that he he kind of put forward, and even if you know over a race weekend he might give me two or three things, you know, um, that I've kind of that's resonated with me, um, and I've I've just I found something from it, you know, a little bit of lap time from some of the information he's given me. So if Rob can just continue to do that, then yeah, he's doing his job. It doesn't have to be, you know, because everybody says, I don't have to agree with or, or, or um, hold on to, but there's always something in, in his advice that I, I find really appropriate and, and helpful. And, uh, and, and also because I've got a bit, quite a bit of experience now as well, I'll challenge him on stuff and, and he doesn't mind that. And we'll, so it's, it's great. Um, great to have someone with so much experience helping us out. Yeah, because I mean, when you're looking for that small thousandth of a second, which is what it's turning out to be, that's important. But what's also important to realise when sometimes it's better to hold on for that, you know, fifth and sixth place, just wait there. Let's get the first race out of the way. And sometimes, you know, to, to relieve the pressure a little bit and then be as happy when you finish fifth and sixth in the first one as if you won race three or something like that. I think that's really, for me personally, I think that's really important. Because as a driver, you think, oh, I finished sixth. Oh, I could have yeah. done better than that. But actually, you've got to think of the bigger picture and, and sitting in your car in your cockpit with your visor down, it's sometimes difficult to see the bigger picture. And I think somebody like Rob, with lots of experience, is a fantastic person to have in the garage to to keep emphasizing to you that you know the long game is the only way to win the british touring car championship yeah absolutely um and, and you know we've got a lot of experience in the garage when you think about it, we've got you know christian deck there as well um, and he, he's been great from from the point of view of just yeah setting expectations for for the weekend and uh, especially after practice once we know where we are um and i feel like that's one thing in my driving this year um has maybe changed a lot as 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 being able to just sit, um, not feel frustrated because you're in seventh, but you know you're quicker than the guy in front, um, and and it's kind of worked the last couple of rounds. We've never we've not been necessarily quick enough to say be winning race one and two, but we've probably been quick enough to be in the top four or five, and we've had to kind of sit back, gather the points, and then we've benefited in race three from that and. It's just quite interesting when you come away from a weekend where you, maybe on paper you look at the, the results you've got and you're like, that's pretty average. But then you look at the points you've just built and it's like, OK, well, I'm second highest scorer. I'll take that. Um, and there's been two or three weekends like that. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's just just comes with experience. You know what I mean? This championship is really intense. Um, it's easy to think that you need to go for every move. And, um, you know, but uh, it's, it's sometimes you just have to 
to hold back and, and gather the points and it pays off sometimes. And I think that's an interesting point that Rory raises there because it's it's very similar to Gordon Shedden actually because there's quite a few race weekends when you know, we'll be sat in the press room and you're getting towards the end of race three and you're starting to think, right, who do I need to go and speak to? I need to speak to him because he's won a race. I need to speak to him because he's been on the podium. And you're looking at the points and you suddenly think, how the hell's he scored that many points this weekend? Because we've not really noticed him. And, you know, you look back over your notes and you'll be like, well, Gordon scored this many, Rory scored that, and I've I've not got anything written down for them. And it's it's that thing where, you know, just just going under the radar almost in this championship and picking up the points is as important as, you know, getting yourself on TV because you're romping away at the front and, and grabbing all the headlines. And that's kind of reflected as, as Rory's touched on in the points, because, you know, you've not managed to get onto the top step of the podium yet this season, which I'm assuming you have, would have hoped to have done by this stage and the halfway point. But, you know, you're sixth in the championship standings and, you know, you're not a million miles away from from the top and from that that next gaggler cars ahead. No, that's it. And, and um, I think uh, it's quite interesting. I did a little, uh, I, I totted up the points of all the, the top top five drivers, for everybody ahead of me. And I've taken, since well, the last two rounds, I've taken points out of everybody but Tom Ingram. So, you know, effectively, I've, I've actually shaved points off of the championship lead, um, as well as the guys in front of me. So we're not, but like you say, you probably can't write anything about me in autosport because I'm not setting the world alight, but we are focused on just trying to make the most of what we've got and it's turning out to kind of be paying off at the moment. So until we can, you know, go and uh, fight for, for, for those race wins outright in race one and two, then um, we're just going to have to play this this game. But yeah, we'll, we'll see see what happens in the second half of the year. We've tried a hell of a lot of stuff at Snetterton and the tyre test, see if we could try and find you know, switch, switch the car on in, in a certain way. Um, and, yeah, we, we found some interesting things, so we'll see, see what comes. comes so one of, one of the big differences this year, which we touched on earlier on, is the hybrid system, uh, which is quite a, a big thing for the Toyota brand because, obviously, hybrid is, is one of their sort of key selling points of buying a Toyota on the road, really. Um, I mean, how have, how's your season been with it so far? Obviously, new technology, there's bound to be issues with certain things because that's new technology for you but I mean what do you think about it as a as a as, as something that's been added to the British Touring Car Championship? Yeah I think it's pretty interesting I think you know the ballast was uh, it didn't have a personality did it? it it would get and go into the car it would take performance away but the driver didn't really have any control o- over it whereas now yeah we're limited on how much hybrid performance we get based on our position in either a championship or qualifying or, or a race um, and then we as a driver have control over when we can use it and I think it's it's uh, it's, it's a great idea um, I think you know um, it's probably I'd love to see us get another little bit of power from it and um, so it would make a little bit more difference say in, in a race and, and potentially it might mix the racing up a little bit better but overall I have to say the hybrid systems work really well and I know that it was one of the bigger concerns between all the teams about its reliability and so on and that that you know fair play for Cosworth because from the first event onwards it's it's worked re, you know pretty well across the board um and, and and from a driving point of view like I say it's, it's quite interesting to be able to have to strategize on when you're going to use it on a lap and whether you're racing or on a quality lap it's cool yeah I'm mean, going looking at Knock Hill there's there's not much because obviously it's a shorter lap anyway. Also, you've got a lot of bumps, and now that's going to be a thing because I think because the the hybrid will stop working if you lose traction. Now you can lose traction as you know at Knock Hill, just going down the straight, you know, going across the start and finish line, yeah. the wheels spin up sometimes. So that yeah. could stop, you know, a, a lot. There. I think there's going to be a little bit of a difference there. People are going to have to use it quite cleverly. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And I think it's going to play a play a big part because of the the way the circuits, you know, it's got these natural undulations and, and hills and, you know, exit and chicane, you've got a hill. Um, and then, you know, going in, usually coming out of Clark and going towards a hairpin, you've got a, a headwind. So exit and hairpin also, that big climb back up to the start finish. So, um, it, you know, if you've got more hybrid than uh, than the others, it's going to make, going to make a big difference. Um, but like you said, that's interesting what you're saying about actually uh, all the bumps in the, you know, because of the wheel spin, because 
yeah, on the main straight, you can quite, it's a bit like Alton Park, quite often you can be wheel spinning in a straight line, all the little dips and, and bumps, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that works. So, I mean, OK, looking looking forward to Knock Hill, but also the rest of the season. So, do you reckon you've got a chance of finishing in the top three or maybe even, you know, nicking the championship for the first time? Uh, you know what? It's, I, I, I would, uh, you know what, the way we're going at the moment, we're being, being kind of pretty smart, we're gathering points, and I think we've got a good chance of going into the final round um, and fight, fighting for the championship. I'm not sure how good the chances will be at the moment, um, I feel, uh, you know, the strength of the uh, certain cars at the front um, are particularly strong. Um, but we're, we're working hard behind the scenes. And, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're taking points out of the, the top five at the moment. And if we can continue that, there's no, there's, there's no reason why we can't actually be fighting for that, that top step come the, the end of the year. Um, I think I had uh, two years in a row where I was fighting for the you know, went into the final round with a chance of fighting for the championship. And, uh, yeah, it'd be, be really cool to, to do that again and, and for this time maybe be a little bit closer to the guys under pressure. No, brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Rory. I know you've got to go and do your school duties now, picking up kids and dropping them off after this. Yeah. And Matt as well. I'm too old for that now. I'm, I'm worried about grandkids, but that'll let my kids sort that out. But good luck at Knock Hill. Let's hope that, uh, you know, you qualify a bit better than sixth and eighth that you've been doing the last time up there. And I've got a funny feeling I think you're going to after a, after a good test at Snetterton. Also, the last couple of meetings getting stronger and stronger in that Toyota. But good luck and good luck for the rest of the season. Brilliant, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Same to you, Matt. Have a good one.